Hello everyone. Thanks for visiting the Wasabi Aquarium channel. This is the third episode on creating a stable environment to prevent algae and negating the need for treatments. I recommend that you stay tuned to the very end. Frequently asked questions include, despite my preventative measures, I still get algae. I got algae and I don't know how to deal with it. Or, I'm after some useful tips and tricks in creating a balanced environment that is less algae prone for my aquarium. And this video is definitely for you. These are the most frequently asked questions that I've heard over the years of operating the store. Well, there are various questions in relation to algae, but the most common ones were those just mentioned just now. Overall, the commonalities of the questions asked are how to prevent algae from appearing entirely. This video is made to explain the key issues in relation to the algae prevention and control. I have always and will continue to endeavour to provide proper consultation to your questions. There's a good contrast between those who are in trouble due to algae blooms and those who keep their aquariums very clean with algae prevention. So let's cover these two points. I hope you find this tutorial informative and useful to better your aquarium. Okay, just before I start, I remind her that this is the third episode in the series. For the fundamentals and basics, there's episode 1 and 2. If you haven't watched them yet, I recommend that you do so first, and they'll make it easier for you to understand this episode. So sorry to trouble you if you haven't done so. Alright, let's proceed. So, what's the major difference between those who have algae to those who don't? The major difference is visible at a glance. Take this densely planted aquarium as the example. As you can see, the 60cm aquarium is loaded with heaps of plants. There's a tendency to say that there's a direct connection with the volume of plants and algae. If the volume of the plants is small, it would be difficult to maintain the aquarium's balance, making it difficult to manage. If you want to decrease the algae as much as possible, I recommend that you increase the plant volumes. The key is to fill in the empty spaces in your aquarium. This is the most important point. Let's take this aquarium as an example. The more the plants, the less algae prone it is. There's minimal algae in this aquarium, this sort of plant density anyway, in comparison with the aquariums impacted by algae. The glossostigma in the foreground is a quick grower, and it uses the nutrients before the algae does. It's also really easy to clean the front glass in maintenance sessions, as glossostigma doesn't get in the way. You can simply use a melamine sponge to clean the entire front glass. Overall, it's a plant that's easily manageable. This is important in choosing a foreground carpeting plant. So, if you wish to create a stable environment to prevent algae in your aquarium, please consider carpeting plants in your layout. Please keep in mind that there will be a requirement to balance the nutrients as the plant densities increase in your aquarium, using liquid fertilizers and retabs. The caveat will hone into your maintenance and management. I will explain that in another video in the series. By doing so, I think you can create a better aquarium environment with synergistic effects. There are lots of questions on how many plants are required when building an aquarium. You can start off with little, and on maintenance days, you can trim and replant the trimmings to increase the plant density. This is often asked, and this method works well even with the smallest amount of plants in an aquarium. But the biggest problem you will face is the excess nutrients that will leach out on the initial month of the aquarium setup. It's pretty common that the substrate used leaches out the excess nutrients to the water column if there's no plant cap to contain it. If the plant density is low, nutrients become free radical readily available for other means of usage, such as algae. This is a vicious cycle and you'll just have a major headache. There's a high probability that this would happen, so I therefore recommend that you plant densely from day one. If you use lots of plants, 
the aquarium will cycle more efficiently and effectively. In turn, making future maintenance pleasant and easy for you going forward. Go with lots of plants at the very beginning and you'll be fine keeping the algae under control. This is the best measure in preventing algae. It beats treating algae, that's for sure. So, how was the video? What's covered in this tutorial is a very simple one. However, it's often overlooked. If the substrate is exposed, then the excess nutrients are dissolved in the water. Theoretically, algae could be controlled at the start if things are kept in balance. If you have low plant density, then this line will go down. So as you can see, this is the point where algae will occur. The more you increase plant density, the better it is for your aquarium's environment to preventing algae problems. Pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> as long as you keep these points in mind, you'll be fine with algae control. If you have any questions in regards to this video, drop a comment below. Nora Aqua will endeavour and try to answer your questions whenever possible. As usual, commonly asked questions may be featured in future videos. So, don't be shy in submitting comments below. Overall, we'll try our best to accommodate your queries either way. It is my absolute pleasure in helping your aquarium queries, with plenty more tutorials to come. I would be very appreciated if you like, share and subscribe to the Wasabi Aquarium channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.